Hey, Andrew here. Today we're going to take a look at Hornady's Frontier 556 Pressure 62 Grain Full Metal Jacket. Lots of folks have been asking for this. The question is, will this fragment, will it do so reliably? To find out, we're going to shoot it out of my 10.5 inch ARFCOM upper. Again, as I've explained before, the main reason I use a 10.5 inch upper for these tests is because if it does well out of this, it should do well out of other barrel lengths. A 10 and a half inch barrel tells us what a 10 and a half inch barrel does at close range, but it also tells us what a 16 inch barrel will do at say 100 yards, give or take. We're going to get out to the range, shoot it out of the 10 and a half inch ARFCOM upper into calibrated 10% ballistic gelatin. Let's take a look. All right, guys, you can't see a lot from this angle here. Um, I can see the disruption a little bit. This is the important thing for you guys from this angle. That's the base of the bullet. There was fragmentation even from the 10 and a half inch barrel, and that's pretty cool. Penetration for that base section, 14.2 inches. The neck, three and a half inches. I can see some temporary stretch cavity here, but I can't really measure it. In terms of um, empirical data here, we're gonna just have to skip on that part and rely on the subjective appearance of the temporary stretch cavity on the high-speed camera. Um, there is something to be said for that as in terms of um, that's a lot more telling than what's left over in the gel. What's left over in the gel, although it's something that you can put a tape measure to, is kind of like reading tea leaves. It's just the disturbance that's left over after the temporary stretch cavity, not the actual size of the temporary stretch cavity. So what you look at on the high speed, in a way that's more accurate. Unfortunately, I just, I don't have a scale to put next to it for us to measure. Maybe I'll do that next time around, get one of those nifty clear rulers or something like that. If we look at the nose of the bullet along with the base of the bullet here, we can see that there's some pretty respectable fragmentation. There is no lead left inside this nose portion of the jacket. I don't know how well you can see that from this angle. So we had some pretty decent fragmentation even for a short barrel. All right, that did very well. Even out of the short barrel, it fragged nicely. It had a reasonably short neck, lots of fragmentation, big, huge temporary stretch cavity. Did a good job. Out of a 16 inch barrel, I would expect to see more fragmentation and theoretically a little bit less penetration. Although based on what we saw here, it ought to still come in over the 12 inch minimum. Does that make this suitable for defense? Yeah, of course. Like all fragmenting full metal jacket, this is absolutely suitable for defense. Um, is it ideal? Well, far from it. Um, there are lots of other loads out there that do better. Um, bonded soft points, solid copper hollow points, heavy OTM, those sorts of things tend to have a shorter neck, bigger temporary stretch cavity, more predictable, reliable performance because the mechanism that they're using to wound is more reliable. But we get spoiled. We forget that because there are dozens, dozens of really, really good 5.56 defense loads, we forget that even kind of sort of mediocre stuff like this is actually really decent. So feel confident in buying up pallets of the stuff. It's 5.56 pressure, so it should function your rifle reliably. It fragments out of a 10 and a half inch barrel, and that means that it should fragment out of a 16 inch barrel out to at least 100 yards or so. 
If you have any questions or if you disagree with me, then definitely leave a comment below because I always like to hear what you guys have to say. If you want to find out how you can rent a phantom high-speed camera just like the one that I used in this test, get in touch with Aimed Research. I'll put their contact information in the description. Have a great day.